What's going on guys, Possible Base 6 here, back to another video, and today I'm here to do my Smackdown review from Salt Lake City, Utah. Incest County, here we come! Yeah, because a lot of people in Utah aren't a very nice people. And this show was okay, I guess. Wasn't really a big standout, but those are just my opinions. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the show. We start with the bloodline coming down, and... Um, Roman just talking about how he's become dominant, so the Usos, and they've all won gold, and then he turns to Solo and says, you know, you kind of disappointed me when you gave up the uh, North America Championship, despite the fact that you actually had to give it up because you weren't scheduled to compete, quote-unquote. He didn't really say that, but you might as well have said that, and he, and he wants him to acknowledge him, and okay, Solo acknowledges him. And then they get ready to leave, and all of a sudden, they, and then all of a sudden, Sammy grabs a mic, and he's like, wait, what about the stuff that I've done for you guys? And Roman's like, why are you in the bloodline again? Oh, you're an honorary ooze. Well, why do you have our shirt on? Take the shirt off. You're not allowed to wear that shirt again. Then Jay rips his shirt off, and he gets a new one. Z, uh, SZ, and he's honorary ooze. More tension between the bloodline. Look, if you guys like it, more power to you. I'm. It's become. It's starting to get really stale at this point, and I don't. I like Sammy, I really do, but the bullshit that he, that he did with Knoxville and especially Logan Paul, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of. I just kind of tune out at this point. So uh, Lacey Evans gets no TV entrance, and she took on Liv Morgan. Well, it was okay for what it is. Liv can work, so can Lacey, but Lacey's just boring and uninteresting. This whole Patriot gimmick is so fucking old, it's not even funny. Towards the end of the match, Evan gets a broom, and then she's like, no, I want a kendo stick. Well, she tries to use it on Liv, but uh, Liv moves, hits the Oblivion, one, two, three. And Liv's looking at the kendo stick, she takes it. Nah, I don't want it. Nah, I'm just kidding. She starts beating the shit out of Lacey with it. Russian Lake Sweep with the uh, Kendo into the barricade. That looked pretty good. Then she gets a table and gets on top. Gets on the post and a giant ass senton through a table. And there you go. Okay, Liv showing off. She has a little bit more killer instinct. I like this. Mean. We need more of this. Where was Bailey at when she did this? When she was feuding with Alexa back in 2017. Seriously, I'm not even kidding. So, so the show, show started off pretty solid. And then it went all fucking down here because shit rose backstage. They're having a party. Jesus fucking Christ. Why are they back again? Genuine question, why are these people back again? The street, street profit show up. Hold on, let me get some champagne in my cup. Okay, and then Nakamura shows up. Who did Nakamura piss off to deserve this? Seriously, Nakamura has been fucking cold. They have frozen this motherfucker to no end. So then Zane's backstage and he talks to um like a guy in catering. And then Moss and Ricochet show up and they talk about, hey... You think the bloodline is actually with you, but in reality, they're going to turn your back on you. And Zayn's like, nah, that's kind of bullshit. And all of a sudden, Solo attacks both of them. We're having a tag match ne next week, playa. We get an Usos video package. They're going to be taking on the Brutes tonight. Then we get a Royal Romo video package because Royal Romo's taking place in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, taking place in Almodon. Shawn Michaels, 1985, only one foot touched, the only memorable thing out of that entire fucking dumpster fire of a pay-per-view, and a rumble itself. And then New Day versus Maximum Man Miles, oh, for fuck's sake. My good friend Emily texted me while this match was happening, and she said that her great-grandpa was watching this. If he happens to be watching this video, I sincerely apologize, sir, because this gimmick is ass. I tried my best to explain it to Emily, and she didn't even know what the fuck was going on. And I don't blame her. If it's to appeal to the gay audience or the LGBTQ community, okay, fine. But it's so, so, so fucking stupid. 
They get, they knew they win by getting a distraction from a fucking camera. A camera distracted Monsor and Mace. Get rid of this fucking gimmick. Give us LA Knight. Maxine Dupree, who are the fuck she is. Cromwell, whatever her fucking name is. Make her a manager. And make Mace and Monsor a makeshift tag team of some sorts. But at least they have chemistry or something. Because Monsor is not a bad make car guy. And Mace isn't that bad. A.K.A. Dio Man. I might as well just call him Dio Man. And he's actually, he's actually pretty damn good on commentary. Not gonna lie, but... This is so fucking retarded. Absolutely retarded. So, anyways. Uh, God damn it. Strowman video package. He's taking on Otis tonight. Because I'll put butts in seats. Hit Raw backstage. Because that's what we needed. More hit Raw on my fucking television. Be still my beating apathy. Then the little Sotherio show up. Who was this for? Gulak is there as well. I forgot Gulak was on television. Strowman versus Otis. It was a big main match. It wasn't dull, but I didn't give a shit because I'm supposed to care about Otis and Chad Gable. Um, Strowman, Strowman looks phenomenal for the shape that he's in. I just don't care about him. Um, he hits a power slam, or he hits a he hits a pretty big spine buster. Oh, this shows off some pretty cool athleticism. And then in the end, a powerbomb and Strowman wins. Why are they giving him a powerbomb? Are they trying to make him like Wardlow? Stop. It ain't going to work because at least Wardlow is over. We get to um, the Brutes backstage and they talk about the tag title match. Drew comes down. He has a strap with him. I'm willing to bet all, some of the people on Twitter were actually really fine during this. Catwoman 13, I see you there. God, she, if you by happen to watch this fucking video, one, hi, second of all, you are a very, very, very sweet individual. And your cat is fucking adorable. Anyways, um, he wants him, it's him versus Cross in a strap match at Extreme Rules. Scarlet shows up, and then Cross tries to attack from behind, and then Drew just beats the shit out of him with a strap. Scarlet gets involved. Then she attempts to spray a fireball at Drew's face. It went fucking nowhere. It was like Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior from Halloween Havoc 98. But at least no one's eye eyebrows got burnt off. And then that didn't work. Drew basically no sell it. He hits a spine buster on Cross. And then he gets hit with a low blow and then a cross jacket. I don't get it. Also, what was the whole thing with the White Rabbit thing? That never got explained, by the way, throughout the entire show. And if it did, I did miss it. But... What the fuck? SmackDown's just become... A fucking their show. It's just a show that exists. It feels like the, all the creative, creative ideas go into Raw, and then the SmackDowns are just leftovers. And Gabe Spigoli, I think that's what his name is, he's back in the creative team. Let him do shit. Unless he's doing NXT, which I'm completely fine with because the dude is a fucking great writer. Then, I don't know. I get it. Triple H, you are running a lot of shit. You need some more creative ideas when it comes to SmackDown because it just feels like SmackDown's become an afterthought. So Raquel took on Dakota Kai. Well, this existed. Uh, Shotzi comes down and then Raquel wins in the most awkward fashion possible. It's a skirmish and there you go. Raquel wins. Cool. Moving on. Raquel or uh, Shotzi, please give her. First of all, give her her last name back. And second of all, bring back the tank, please. That was very fun. She's taking on Bailey next week. Hey, Rose backstage, because that's what we fucking need in our television. Lothario show up on the attack top dollar. We're getting this match next week, because I'll put butts in seats. Card rundown for next week. In two weeks, we're getting um, Gun uh, we're getting Volta versus Sheamus. Okay, then I will love. You know what? If it could somehow top their match at Clash of the Castle, which they're going to have to fucking try for that. I'm all for it. Usos versus Bruce for the tag titles. It wasn't dull. It wasn't a bad match. Um, Sammy kept trying to interfere. Uh, Dunn doing the uh, joint manipulation. Sammy gets a chair at one point, but Shima stops it, and all of a sudden Imperium show up, and they attack. 
Then the one D to um the one D to um done and there you go. Uh the Usos win. Cool. So yeah, that was SmackDown. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't really that great either. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the show. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, tap the little bell for more notifications. Join the herd. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.